Hello everyone, Legend Begins here, and welcome to another Game Legend. In this episode, we'll be looking at the mysterious Poke Gods. That means a Game Legend that's finally not a creepypasta, you see, I told you Game Legend wouldn't always be about creepypastas. But no, you didn't listen to me. But you know what, whatever, I forgive you guys. But in the early days of Pokemon, things were simple. No Mega Evolutions, no Horde Battles, no Ice Cream Pokemon. I'm looking at you, Vanellish! But all stupidness aside, it was easier for things to be mixed around and rumored. In 1996, Pokemon Red and Green were released in Japan on February 27th with a special edition, Pokemon Blue, following later in the year on October 15th, and Pokemon Red and Blue released in North America on September 30th, 1998. Secrets and tips were spread by mouth until the internet began to take off, in which amateur site creators and Pokemon fanatics enjoyed roaming, spreading rumors, and thoughts. Ah, the 90s. Video games were magical, filled with wonder and possibility. Before any of you ask, yes, I was born in the 90s. What did you think, I was just some little kid doing Let's Plays and game reviews? Even though I haven't actually done a game review. Anyway! <laughs> in this day and age, you can find absolutely anything on the internet. Or YouTube, where amateurs are only click away. You have to understand though, back in the 90s, we weren't dumb. You may say, wow, you have to be a complete and utter moron to fall for any of this. But back then, video games were things of awe and wonder where you didn't know what the developers would do but now you can always tell what they would or wouldn't do in a game except a few especially family games <coughs> but out of the main point if you haven't already figured it out by now this episode is about poke gods mystical rumored pokemon spread by mouth and eventually through the internet they were supposedly stronger than any other pokemon that existed which had extremely difficult methods to obtain i'll continue with the history a little bit before i delve into some of the exact methods uh, but before any of this, though, shout out to Rage Candy Bar, where a ton of information can be found, much of which I won't cover. Link will be in the description, so yeah, go check them out. Poke Gods came about from a plethora of reasons, such as supposed evolutions of Pokemon that already existed, misnamed, missing no like Lich Pokemon planned for the gold and silver versions, or any species above 150, or seemingly fabricated or just random. Much of the time, it was believed that although they were ridiculously powerful, and having them faint in battle would result in their actual deaths. The rumor often invo involved some sort of specific code for a series of annoying, repetitive actions and events that would take the player hours to complete, where the chances of messing up on a single step were so high, if it didn't work, you would normally assume that you did something incorrectly and start over. Because of this, fans theorized and spread ideas through both the internet and by mouth, which ranged from looking under the truck to beating the Elite Four 37 times Catching 150 Pokemon, talking to Oak, resting at home, encountering 40 Pokemon, eating 5 burritos, reading the creepypasta, and drinking a pumpkin spice latte to celebrate a job well done. Okay, that last part might have been added by white girls, but that's irrelevant. <laughs> racist jokes aside, or not racist, but yeah, that would be racist, okay. Um, racist <laughs> jokes aside, I am white, by the way. Uh, just throwing that out there. Once gold and silver were announced, the concept art fueled even more of these rumors, to the point where fans speculated on if any of this could uh, be caught in the first game. I know I use the word rumor a lot in this video, but that's what all this is. Rumors. Another noteworthy mention is Ho-Oh, which appeared at the end of the first episode of Pokemon, which fans speculated to be an evolved form of Moltres, or even a fourth legendary bird. Ah, don't you love it? Because legendary bird? I'll, I'll show myself out. Anyway, they also believe that Missing No is a dispart fl flying type, is leftover data from this Pokemon, or Poke God, although we now know exactly what Missing No is. And perhaps I'll do an episode on that later. And a fun fact though, that Missing No was originally bird type, and not flying, which shows that the original name of the flying type was bird, but I might put that in the Missing No episode. Other sources of po the Poke God craze came from the anime, and fusions such as Venus Doys, which were never featured in game. To explain this next segment, I brought in a special guest, my friend, Darkwolf X37, to explain the origins of the Poke Gods. The first Poke God is believed to be rumored as one that actually exists. Mew. In Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, it was widely known that Mew existed in some portion of the game, due to many screenshots, official released information, and even official rumored content from Game Freak. Although fans knew Mew existed, nobody knew how to obtain it at the time, 
although now it's widely known that Mew can be caught by exploiting the programming of the games. Most of the theories involved repetitive and tedious actions, and many codes involved the elusive Japanese game Pokemon Green, which nobody really knew anything about, not here at least. A popular belief was that if you put the legendary birds in your party, in order, Articuno, Zapdos, Moltres, along with three Geodudes, Mr. Psychic, the NPC who gives out TM-29, would tell you about the Poke Gods. This was pretty consistent, except that sometimes it was said that you also had to have all 150 Pokemon, and other times the Geodudes were not required. Another popular belief was a Bill Secret Garden, in which all Poke Gods resided. This theory arose from the little space behind Bill's house. In fact, nearly any area with inaccessible grass, space, or anything really, was said to be an area to find Poke Gods. And finally, the last popular belief was in Poke God City, an enormous town that you could access in which people traded Poke Gods. Popular names for Poke God City included Cloud City, Pokemon or Poke God Island, the Poke God Factory, which has nothing to do with an array of colors, I might add, and Bricktown. Don't ask me why Bricktown, just roll with it. To give an example of this, I will be reading a method to get into Poke God City word for word. There are such things as Poke Gods. To get them, beat the Elite Four 30 times without talking to anyone in between the nurse in the Poke Center at Indigo Plateau, Plateau or whatever it is, and the Riv. On the 30th time, Professor Oak will say, I'm getting tired of this, and he will let you walk around the Hall of Fame, which leads to a city, a new city, where people will sp swap Poke Gods. This is copied and pasted nearly every time, including the typo. Some people corrected this to be River, but now most people actually agree that it was Rival. And look at that, he doesn't even know what it's called. The Indigo Plateau, or whatever it's called. Like, you can't even spell Plateau. <sighs> anyway, back to the main point. Some Poke Gods were fusions, like Venus Stoice. Some were from gold and silver, like Peak Blue. Which was just a Meryl, by the way. But they believed it to be a secret ultimate evolution of Pikachu, as it had similar features originally. Plus, another aspect of this is when you traded a Raichu for an Electrode with a man on Cinnabar Island to respond with, the Raichu you gave me went and evolved, further fueling the Poke God belief. The real reason this exists be is because in the original Japanese version of the game, you traded your cadaver for the electrode, so it makes sense that it would evolve through trading. The translators failed to catch this when they changed it to Raichu, this mistake was left in the game. This also relates to the rumors of the Myth Stone, which was said to evolve any Pokemon in the game, even ones in their final stage of evolution, and legendaries as well. And some vocal gods are original, mega hard to find, and extremely overpowered. Take Doomsay, and Doomsday, for instance. It was believed that Doomsday arose from a misspelling of Doomsday. They eventually separated it into an evolution line, ignoring the obvious sprite problems. People still believing, believed in them. I mean, look at these things. They don't even begin to look like they belong in a Poke God game. Ah! You see? They, they've even got me saying it. Pokemon game. Anyway, it's not even the creepy pa factor that doesn't belong in a, Poke in a Pokemon game. Yes, I'm talking to you, Esper. Anyway, back to the Poke... Look at those eyes. They're just... Dang it, Esper! Get off the screen! <sighs> Again, anyway, back to the Poke Gods. Poke Gods have many rumors to obtain them. Again, long and tedious. And I'll be sharing some of them here. This is a warning. None of these methods actually work and are completely made up. AKA fake. I will not be responsible for any lost time attempting these. There are five main methods to these codes to encounter Poke Gods. These reasons include obtaining a special gift from Professor Oak after fulfilling some set of requirements, obtaining secret HM moves beyond the five from the game, some of which were actually featured in later games, such as Dive and Rock Smash, catching all 150 Pokemon and doing some sort of task afterwards, Miss Stones, as I mentioned, to evolve any Pokemon and doing something X amount of times, resulting in a tedious and repetitive task. So let's start with the Mew under the truck theory. In Vermilion City, if you obtain the HM cut from another player through trading a Pokemon with a move, you can skip boarding the SSN, allowing you to access the gym without visiting the ship to obtain cut. 
therefore preventing the ship from leaving. If you return once you obtain Surf, you can Surf on a Pokemon to a small strip of land, in which there's... a truck. But everyone speculated and theorized on uh, why the truck is there, and new secret items and special events were rumored to be uh, about the truck, or more specifically, under the truck. These rumors ranged from simply using strength, to using cut slash the tire's strength to move it, and even getting car keys to drive off uh, to drive it off the spot, revealing new or whatever item slash event was said to be there. It's just confirmed. It is confirmed that there's nothing under the truck. Although why exactly it's there remains a mystery, but it was most likely a joke or Easter eggs from the developers with no real significance, kind of as a reward to anyone who managed to make it to that spot. Some Poke Gods arose from the anime, such as Venustoys, as mentioned before, and Mew 3, which is just Mewtwo wearing armor from the first movie, in one episode of the anime, which, aside from looking epic, isn't significant in any right. Mewtwo quickly obtained popularity for one reason, it was the most powerful Pokemon legally obtained in the game. At a time when Mew was still largely whispered rumors, Mewtwo was a bonus Pokemon you could actually see and even catch. With the Mewtwo's stats alone beating out many Pokemon combined with its moves and psychic typing, any team would be near unbeatable. It was simply so powerful that there was no competition, even more so since real competitive battling was even less known. However, rumors soon began to pop up of a Pokemon even more powerful than Mewtwo. People figured that since there was already a Mew, Mew 1, and a Mew 2, there might likely be a higher numbers of even greater power. As I mentioned, the Mist Stone was said to evolve any Pokemon, there are quite a few widely circulated, which included an evolved form of Flareon. Interesting enough, this was the only evolution said to evolve again, or at least the only one so famous. I'll put a list on the screen and attempt to read these. Venusaur to Cyberstar, Charizard to Charcoal, Blastoise to Rainer, Butterfree to Locust Stud. Beedrill to Beepin, Raticate to Radical, Nidoking to Nidogod, Nidoqueen to Nidogoddess, Golduck to Paraduck, Sandslash to Sandswipes, Hypno to Dream Master, Onyx to Diamondix, Gengar to Spooky, Flareon to Flareon, Eevee to Lunarion, Eevee to Solarion, Almanite to Almanist, Mew to Cornea, Mew, Mew, and Mewtwo to Mew 3. Whew, that was a mouthful. Insert joke. Diamondix was a rumored evolution of Onyx, as the crystal Onyx was shown in the anime, sparking fan methods on how to obtain this mythical evolution. While most Poke Gods are believed to evolve from a previous existing Pokemon, a few seemingly have neither connection with any of the original 151 Pokemon, nor a counterpart in the coming Gold and Silver Pokemon. Poke God craze lasted its limelight through 1998 to the early 2000s, where two specific Poke Gods stand out by having the largest histories of the entire phenomenon. These two are Doomsay and Doomsday. The original sprites of Doomsay and Doomsday are depicted as graphic ghouls, which are most likely are directly ripped from an RPG as they fit the RPG, uh, an RPG style and not that of a Pokemon game. Soon after, another depiction of D Doomsday arose. This included a more Pokemon-esque art style, along with the usual dark description and an extremely high amount of power. For the most part, both Doomsday and Doomsday were considered to be standalone Poke Gods with no connection to regular Pokemon. However, as usual, the occasional code did pop up that offered an, al uh, ter an alternative method to obtain them, which were never widely circula circulated. One of these alternatives said that you could obtain a Doomsday by evolving it both from Gr Gengar and Missing No with a Ghost Stone that would merge them together. While another had Doomsday evolve, a uh, Doom sorry, Doomsday evolve from Haunter and Doomsday evolve from Gengar. As both Poke Gods were commonly thought to be ghost types of some kind, it would have only made sense for some people to believe that they would evolve from some of the few ghost types that had already existed. Eventually, fans put together an official Pokegod list with their order in the Pokedex that reads as follows. 152, Ho-Ow, which is um, Ho-Oh, but misspelled. 153, Topagee. 154, Pika Blue. 155, Tranticus. 156, Primator. 157, Doomsay. 158, Doomsday. 159, Psyche. 160, Wizwar, 161, Nidogod. Now some of those sound pretty awesome, like Psyche and Wizwar and Tyranticus and Peekaboo. Primator isn't bad either, but none of these, while bearing resemblance to some actual Pokemon, are none of these ever made into the game, unless it's some of those fancy wancy Generation 6 X and Y bird. Tim Burton Mega Man things that I need to get caught up on because I haven't really played it. 
But I digress. Another polka god said to arise is Tricket, which is an interesting case because there is no sprite created to depict it, but the popularity may have arisen due to the method to obtain it, which I'll read. May also have been widely believed due to the fall uh, due to being followed in most cases by approved by Nintendo. I th personally think it was widely believed because of the name Tricket. Just try saying, try saying it right now, Tricket. Is that just not the most satisfying word ever? But anyway, the code went as follows. This is the code for Tricket, a new Pokemon for gold and silver. First of all, you must carry all six bug Pokemon in your party in this order. Caterpie, Metapod, Butterfree, Weedle, Kakuna, and Beedrill. Then open an empty uh, box in your PC without any Pokemon in it. Go to the Safari Zone and catch a Wild Venonat and a Wild Venomoth. You cannot catch a Venomoth before Net Venonat. Then catch a Wild Paris and a Wild Parasect. Same rule applies for Parasect, not before Paris. Keep them all in your PC box and do not change for any new ones. You do not, you do not, you do not need Scyther or Pinsir because they are rather rare to find. You'll see them on Victory Road, however, by catching all the other bug Pokemon. That's a free code. Yes, along with Scyther in red, Pinsir will be in red too. And along with Pinsir blue, Scyther will be in blue. It's the truth. Well, that's convincing. Beat the Elite Four all the way through with the six Pokemon total. Do not allow Caterpie, Metapod, Weedle, Weedle or Kakuna to uh, continue to evolve. Just press B to stop them from evolving. It's best for them to be on high levels, such as level 50 Caterpie and Weedle, but level 60 Metapod and Kakuna, and level 75 for Butterfree and Beedrill. You can use Gar Rare Candies and Beam Shot and a Game Shark to boost them. After you win all five, Gary 2 matches. Gary also matches. Professor Oak notices that you have uh, all your bug Pokemon. He asks if you're a bug collector, yes or no. If you answer no, he says, my mistake, and the Hall of Fame comes up. If you answer yes, he takes you to a cage where Tricket, the Cricket, lives. He lets you take it and use it for future battles. Tricket is on level 65. He's the same level as Gary's final Pokemon. Tricket knows Spore, Twin Needle, Mega Kick, Crickets like to kick their legs, and Sing. I do not know if it learns any moves. It has no link with Shady Bug. Shady Bug is an entirely different Pokemon. They're just bug Pokemon. The interesting thing about this code is the fact that the few sentences at the end about Shady Bug were always copied with it, though they seem unrelated to anything. This was generally ignored by most people, as there were no wild stories on how to capture Shady Bug or anything else about it. Both the names Tricket and Shady Bug probably originated from one of the more obscure lists on both gods being circulated. Tricket was uh, listed directly after Shady Bug in the list, uh, described as only being the evolution of Shady Bug. Shady Bug was described as a bug that protects itself with a leaf. Since there are no actual images or other basis for either Poke God, figuring out why this was apparently debated is unclear if the list came first or if the code, uh, or if it was the code that inspired the lists. Now there were a few merged Pokemon, and since these aren't very diverse in their descriptions, I'll go over a couple that I like personally. Yes, again, Venustoice. But mostly, Zapmol Kuno, which originated from the manga, and can you tell me can you not tell me that this thing is amazing? Just Can you tell me that this thing is not amazing? Just look at it. Oh, that's amazing. I love it. Now, uh, drum roll, please. And now, for the greatest and most well-known Pokegod other than Mew, Peekaboo. The original source of Peekaboo was leaked through official art of Meryl. Yes, Meryl. I know it's stupid, but these were the 90s. You know what? Just disregard what I said earlier, we were stupid back then. Just kidding. Anyway, when this fan art was leaked, someone at Nintendo lacked a way to describe it, so dubbed it by its appearance. Pika Blue. Pika, I mean Meryl, was introduced in a special short of the anime called Pikachu Summer Vacation, which finally destroyed the rumors. Meryl was shown to be nothing more than an ordinary, non-godlike Pokemon unrelated to Pikachu. There were other Pikachu evolutions created as well, such as Pika Flare, but I'll leave that to you to research for yourself, because this is a long episode and I'm tired, but I'm still willing to cover the uh, major points for you guys. You're welcome. Although the code to obtain Pika Blue that doesn't work reads as follows. Code by Weasel224. Official Pika Blue, new. Note, this code has been approved by Nintendo and not, will not mess up any part of your game. Perfectly clean and won't erase any data. To catch Pika Blue in any version, follow these simple steps to catch him. I've added the steps that were missing on the Pika Blue code. To catch Pika Blue in any version, new updated code, follow the simple steps to catch him. 1. First, you must catch all 150 Pokemon, not, I repeat, not using a Game Shark. 2. Then you must also have 17 of your Pokemon at over at level 70. 
100. What? Okay. Three. Then, when all these tasks are complete, go to the guy in Pewter City who asks you if you have uh, been to the museum yet. Say no as he takes you to the door. And then go to the museum and go upstairs and talk to the lady who says, I want my boyfriend to catch me a Pikachu. After you talk to her, immediately come out of the door. Once, and once you come out of the door, do not take any steps forward, left, or right. Immediately use fly and go to Silvadon City. Go to the Safari Zone and catch a Taurus. Leave room in your Pokemon slots. So only bring five when you go and catch him. Then put Taurus in your first slot. Go to the game corner and talk to the lady that says, Go next door to the coin exchange corner to use your coins to get great prizes. By this time she will say, Hey, you have all the badges? Wow! Well then, since you were nice enough to talk to me, I'll give you this Pokemon. I found it stranded behind the Pokemon Museum. He is so strong and I cannot control him. But since you have all the badges, you take him! It will say, You got question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question times question mark times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Question mark times seven. Then when you try to use it, it'll be just like you were pressing cancel and exit every time you click on it. Then go to Professor Oak, and he will say the, uh, the same thing he says when you give him Oak's parcel. He, he will say, you delivered Oak's parcel. Then when you go to your Pokemon line and replace the Pokemon in your spot, just put a Spearow or something first. It will be called, question mark, 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 times five. So you go to the nickname guy and change it to Pika Blue. It has Electric Wave, Psy Shock, and Electrode. Don't ask me why it's an electrode, but it's an awesome move. 11. If it's a level 999 and peak blue will, yes, it will appear in your Pokedex. After 150, we'll say 154. Then if you look at the Pokedex info, it will look like this. Name, peak blue. Type, question mark, question mark, question mark, blah, 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 times 7. Height, 2 foot, 3 inch. Length, 3 foot, 4 inch. And this has been corrected to say height, 2 foot, 3 inch, weight, 34. Stats, attack 999, defense 999, speed 999, special 999. Attacks, electric wave, psi shock, electrode, sonic boom. When you get more than 60,000 experience points after catching it. You learn sonic boom when you gain around 60,000 experience points and it kills any Pokemon in one hit and never misses. Okay, now this is actually stupid. People believed Yoshi to be a Pokemon capable of being unlocked. Uh, most usually is an evolved form of Dragonite. And yes, even Luigi was rumored to be a Pokemon. Which originated as an April Fool's joke from Nintendo Power. God rest its soul. So you can't really blame people for that. Almost. To finish this up, there were a few other Pokemon gods which were rumored to be glitch Pokemon like Missing No, many of which used the ghost uh, simply used the ghost sprite Aerodactyl or Kabutops fossil sprites, which were fueled by the appearance of Missing No in its multiple forms. What I know about the Poke Gods and the many methods associated with obtaining them. The 90s were a fun time, and it's a shame we can't have this mystical aspect of gaming, and this wonder surrounding games. But at least we can look back and laugh and eat cake. And keep in mind that it's just a legend, right? A game legend.